And you tell these people how you come to know about Jesus Christ and what he means to you in your life. Just talk right up because you certainly have a wonderful testimony. Tell them how and what Jesus has meant to you in your life and what he has done for you in your life. Like Susie said, I'm from a Jewish family. I lived in New York City in a Jewish community. I never knew a thing about Jesus Christ all my life long. I went to Hebrew school. I learned how to read Hebrew. I learned about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I wore a yarmulke. I went to Shabbos services, but I never knew a thing about the living God and the reality of a God. And I learned the history of the Jews and the Jewish people and how God was supposed to be with them, but I never knew a thing about him. I went to school. My family expected big things from me to be either a doctor or a lawyer, something typical like that, but there was no peace in my life. And uh, through all my searching, through drugs, through school, through everything I encountered, I never found a peace in my life. Finally, I left everything behind. I left college. I left my friends. I came out to California to seek out an old friend. And I found him out on the Sunset Strip in Hollywood preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I was completely astounded. I, I didn't know what had happened to him, but he took me by this little church, the Tony and Susan Alamo Christian Foundation, and there for the very first time in my life, I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ preached in the power of the Holy Ghost. And it touched my heart so deeply, I knew it was the absolute truth. I just thank God that it was on that night I got down on my knees and I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart and to make me a new creature, and he did. I just thank God that from that day on, I've been serving him for these five years and I wouldn't trade one second of my Christian existence for all the riches in the world. I just thank God that I found him and that he found me. Well, you see, God did make something big out of you. He made you an apostle and a disciple. Said he even made a priest out of you. How could you ask for any more than that? So he, he gave you all the things that you really were looking for before. Bob, I'm so thankful for what Jesus has done in your life, like hundreds of so many of the other young people at the church. And that little church that you're talking about is no longer a little church. But I'll tell you the thing that happened with that that was so astounding. When we saw what was happening today and we would drive up and down Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood Boulevard and look at the faces of the young people, they were out there turning over police cars and crying God is dead and kill the pigs, burn down the establishment, burn down the churches. And it was the most saddening thing that could possibly be imagined because here we called ourselves Christian America. And we looked at these young people as if they were something that had been dropped out of helicopters on us, something that uh, we didn't know uh, how they had uh, really happened. And uh, we began to pin all sorts of labels on them, flower children and hippies. They were not any of those things. They were our children. And whatever they were, they were a product of our making. And whether we wanted to admit it or not, we as Christians were responsible for each and every one of them. Oh, sure, we had big churches on every corner. We had million-dollar constructions. And we had all the social steps and the social orders that we felt had met the requirements of Christianity. But truly, somewhere along the way, we had failed. Because this was the result. This was our creation. And this is the thing that turned Tony and I out into the streets with these young people. To take the old-time religion, the gospel of Jesus Christ, out to them. And we found such a tremendous response from them. We found that they were like sponges. They were not satisfied with the kind of life and the type of life that they were living. They were searching for depth. They were searching for reality. And when they looked at us who call ourselves Christians and they labeled us hypocrites, I said, I'm just as guilty as I can be. I spent a lot of years in a church. And I spent a lot of years uh, making up the social order and the social structure of what we called Christianity. But yet I knew in my heart and in my soul that I had failed. And that truly I would stand at the judgment bar of God. And that I would be held responsible for this thing and that God would hold each and every one of us that called ourselves Christians. So we went out into the streets and we took the gospel to them. And we found that their hearts were open and that they were searching, that they wouldn't buy a second-hand religion, that they were, were not a young people. They were a, a group of people that were searching for truth. They were not interested in the traditions of our fathers and of our elders, but they were searching for a reality. 
and when they grasped the knowledge of the saving power of Jesus Christ, the reality of God, that God himself had sent his only begotten Son, that they could have life and have it more abundantly, that started the Jesus movement, what has been labeled today the Jesus movement. But I want to be able to give credit where credit is deserved. I feel like Jesus started the Jesus movement. And I think the disciples and the apostles played a mighty great part in it. So have all of our other old fundamental Christians for the past 2,000 years. But something new and exciting was happening. The charismatic movement was on its way. And God was moving among a group of young people in the most supernatural, astounding way. They were leaving their pads of dope. They were leaving their lives of sin. They were kneeling humbly before Jesus Christ and asking him to come into their hearts. They were not on a trip. They were on that solid rock, Christ Jesus. They had foundation for the first time in their lives. And then, of course, with every great move of God, always there's the contention of the enemy. And he began to rise up his forces against the great move of God. But the one thing that we Christians can stand firm upon is the word of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we know that this is truth. And we're so thankful to the Lord today for every young person. Oh, how the Jesus movement began to spread how it began to grow, and the next thing you know, police officers who had been confused and astounded in the beginning, they were getting saved. They were getting filled with the Spirit. They were riding around in cruiser cars and watching our kids on the streets while they were witnessing. They were holding prayer meetings down at, at, in the police departments, and God began to move out into the churches, and there began to be a great outpouring of the Spirit. I know that this is nothing but fulfillment of prophecy. Again, a fulfillment. For the Bible says in the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. But what we need so badly today in the Christian arena is grounding. We know that God is making a great move. But we see so many people that are making professions of Jesus Christ and still trying to hold on to the world with one hand and God with the other. It's hard for me to rationalize, it's hard for me to accept, it's hard for me to believe that somebody can be testifying for Christ today and working in a nightclub tomorrow. I, I can't see that at all. And I believe that there is such a great need for a grounding to the young Christians and that they realize that when they make a pact with Christ Jesus, that Jesus said that we should live a holy life and that this is what he requires of us. I'm thankful to the Lord. I'm thankful for him in my life because three and a half years ago when I had an examination with this horrible uh, terminal condition that I have, the doctor said that I had hours, possibly days to live. And the last three and a half or four years, I've worked harder than I ever have in my life. And truly, I know the reality of Jesus Christ. I know his power. I know that he is the Savior. I know that he is the Messiah. And now, my Jewish husband, who is also born again of the Spirit, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, will sing for us, It Is Now. <laughs>
It's now. 